A trip to study land and time provide lifelong memories. Students from Glendale's geology program have lasting images and thoughts from a 10-day journey. The canyon itself, it is 277 miles long, 18 miles wide in some places, and about a mile deep. The gorge was really cool. It was like a, a canyon that had walls really close together. Zion is located on the western margin of the Colorado Plateau. 11,000 years ago, they all collapsed and made a pool. It is bigger than it looks. <laughs> the southern Colorado Plateau is home to more than a dozen state and national parks. Seventeen adventurers embark on a trip that includes spectacular destinations throughout northern Arizona and southern Utah. For the next 10 days, the students and faculty experience the best of the Colorado Plateau, its beauty, its mysteries, and its geology. And along the trail, they'll uncover some of its secrets. The adventurers travel north toward the south rim of the Grand Canyon. Their first stop is the Verde Valley. Montezuma's Well is the first of many national parks and national monuments the geodesy team visits. The well is a natural sinkhole, nearly 400 feet wide, with cliffs towering 70 feet above the water's edge. Students are briefed about the geologic significance of the well. Ten to five million years ago, that's the most recent one. We're actually going to be looking at some rocks that are that age and a little younger. Students also share some of their own research. The water is very rich in uh, uh, calcium carbonate and carbon dioxide, and it comes in at about a million and a half gallons a day. People first inhabited the region about 11,000 years ago. Around the well, masonry cliff dwellings and pueblos were built. Irrigation ditches were also constructed, bringing life to this arid landscape. In the early 1400s, following nearly 300 years of occupation, Montezuma's well was abandoned. No one knows why for sure, but many believe disease, drought, and crop failure may have contributed. Red Mountain Volcano is a cinder cone in northern Arizona, about 25 miles north of Flagstaff. A haven for hikers, Red Mountain is also a natural lure for geologists. The ground just gives way until you lift your foot up and make another step. Um, it's way more exciting than being in the loud room, that's for sure. Any avid geologist is always on the lookout for samples. Red Mountain is estimated to be three quarters of a million years old. Geology students did not want to leave without experiencing its black grains of crystalline minerals. It's fun to see things in the field, but it's so much more fun to be out there and be looking at it with somebody, especially people that it's new for. Yeah, it looks almost know. like a rainbow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's chatoyance, they call that. <laughs> there is no place on our planet where the effect of time is more dramatically illustrated and recorded than the Grand Canyon. Millions of years have allowed the mighty and persistent Colorado River to carve an artful and revealing path. The Grand Canyon is the majestic centerpiece of the Colorado Plateau. Even though it's late spring, the adventurers are greeted with unseasonably cold weather, but geologists are not easily dispirited. <laughs> Traveling along the canyon's south rim road, the snow becomes heavier but the spring squall quickly subsides as the Little Colorado River Gorge draws closer. When we come back, the geology students travel along the Little Colorado River Gorge. Geodesy takes them to dinosaur tracks and into Utah and a spectacular view of the San Juan River. If I got to go to college, oh my goodness. I just feel like that's my destiny. You get to make like a, a supernova of skill or talent or whatever it is. My name is Queen and I am your dividend. Traveling along the South Rim, the Geodesy team is greeted with a late spring snowstorm. The Geodesy team has prepared for the conditions that a 10-day trip into the wilds can offer. 
dealing with rough weather while camping can be challenging. You do have to prep them for camping unless they're experienced campers, you know, I mean, you don't want people to show up without a sleeping bag. The Little Colorado River begins in eastern Arizona in the White Mountains. It travels half the state and eventually joins up with its larger brother, the Colorado. Approaching the gorge's edge, the treeless landscape provides another beautiful view. It is a quiet place, a timeless place. One can easily get an appreciation of how wind, water, and land have come together in forming this narrow and deep passage. And then it's time for the adventurers to move on. The caravan stops at dinosaur tracks just outside of Tuba City, Arizona. Students get a chance to inspect footprints made by creatures that roamed the earth during the early Jurassic period, some 180 million years ago. I still think it looks like feathers. Local Navajos provide tours of the 34 dinosaur trails and more than 300 dinosaur tracks. Leaving the dinosaur tracks behind, the adventurers leave Arizona behind too as they head into southern Utah and deeper into the Colorado Plateau region. Just outside Mexican Hat, Utah, Gooseneck State Park provides an epic view of the San Juan River. The San Juan has etched a dramatic meandering path, cutting down more than a thousand feet. This relentless process took some 300 million years to achieve. For geology students, books cannot match the stunning power of the scene before them. It makes everything just seem more real and it's really great to see the landforms that I've been reading in the geology books. Following taking a few photographs and some lessons on the area, the adventurers are off to the Natural Bridges National Monument. The road up to the Natural Bridges provides a panoramic view as it reaches the summit of the Grand Gulch Primitive Area. Erosion and weathering have created these formations. They are formed during periods of flash flooding. A stream undercuts the rock. As it erodes the rock, the meandering water cuts deeper into the rock. Finally, the water breaks through underneath the rock which then forms a natural bridge. The wind also plays a role in shaping these rocks. This is almost all windblown sand. So these are the little cross beds. In front Steve Cottle enjoys taking students out into the field on trips like Geodesy. He believes he is helping students develop a love for the land, a legacy that can be passed down from one generation to the next. Maybe it's just the dad in me, but you know, seeing the students out there excited about things and, and you know, kind of getting a spring in their step and running and wanting to go around the next turn on the trail, I think that's what really does it for me. A break in the weather brings a renewed spirit, the hopes of a drier camp. The Geodesy team head to Moab, Utah, with stops in Canyonlands and the Arches National Parks and beyond. Geology students reflect on the day and what lies ahead for them on their geodesy. I've never seen snow over the Grand Canyon except for in pictures. Been here once in my life and this is an amazing experience. The textbook can only take you so far. You can actually come out here and walk on the stones and put your hands on the stone. It really brings it to, brings it to life. I found that this is an excellent way to learn because it's easy and I'm learning geology and I'm not in geology lab, I'm camping. Just the way the trip is set up, you get to see, for lack of a better term, you get to see all the rocks in their natural habitat. When Geodesy returns, the adventurers visit Canyonlands and Arches National Parks. They travel the Burr Trail as they head toward the Water Pocket Fold and into Capitol Reef National Park. They also visit Utah's Kodachrome Basin State Park.
a single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. What is it about this place called the Colorado Plateau? What makes this rugged, often hard and harsh landscape so attractive to some? It just feels more remote, more primitive, and it kind of still looks like it did back when people discovered it. With only a few days into their 10-day geodesy trip, the Glendale Community College geology adventures have seen plenty. The Grand Canyon, the Little Colorado River Gorge, dinosaur tracks, Gooseneck State Park in Utah, and the natural bridges. So far, it's been very scenic with lots of geology. A little winter weather adds to the adventure while learning in the field. I think it's just seeing the looks on the faces of the students when they get to somewhere new and they go, wow. Near Moab, Utah, in the southeastern part of the state, Canyonlands National Park was named and established by President Lyndon Johnson in 1964. It is a massive landscape featuring four distinct districts. Sky, Needles, Maze, and the Rivers District are all unique unto themselves. The geodesy adventurers visit the Sky District to inspect a geologic structure called the Upheaval Dome. Each student is assigned one of the scheduled geologic stops along the geodesy trail. They research and present that information to the group once the geodesy team arrives at that location. We are in the canyon lands, as we already know. Their area was flooded by oceans, cross-bedded by rivers, covered by mud flats, and then buried in sand. Upheaval Dome is a crater estimated to be around 170 million years old. It's a short hike to the rim. The origin has been very highly debated. Around the 1990s, they came up with the idea that it was either a salt dome or a meteor impact crater. Until recently, the salt dome theory was the most widely accepted, but some German scientists found this shocked quartz, which could only happen by way of um, immense pressure, like that of a meteor impact. A couple of photos and the geodesy team leave for the Arches National Park, just a few miles away. The Arches National Park contains more than 2,000 natural sandstone arches. The park lies atop an underground salt bed, which is the main cause of the formation of the arches. It was designated a national park in 1971. The park offers some of the more unique natural formations on our planet. Delicate Arch is one of them. This 65-foot freestanding natural landmark has worldwide recognition and appeal. It's also depicted on the Utah license plate. Geodesy is proving to have it all when it comes to the mystery and the splendor of nature and our planet. Every horizon, every turn, there's something new awaiting the adventurers. It's just there's always something new to learn about geology. It's always fun, exciting. Um, you can um, get hands-on at things. You can study things, it's really fun. One last look at Delicate Arch and it was time to move on. The adventurers set a course for the Burr Trail and the Water Pocket Fold. Field trips like Geodesy means there's always time for a quick roadside stop. The urge to search for fossils and rocks is too powerful to resist. We get out of the van and, and you know, you're a little sleepy and they wake up and they look at me, oh my gosh, and they start snapping the pictures and, and looking at the rocks. Each student, in their own individual way, is a rock collector. I got a couple drawers full of just random ones, and since I didn't really know what they were before this class, then um, I'm gonna start labeling <laughs> before they were just kind of pretty. And as soon as the geodesy team loads their treasures, it's time once again to head down the road. Destination, the Burr Trail. Along the way, a stop on Boulder Mountain the geodesy team is now west of Capitol Reef National Park. Cooler temperatures have the adventurers bundling up and enjoying what remains of some snow. <laughs> Even while traveling, the student geologists are given lessons. The learning never stops. Jurassic, uh, Navajo sandstone, and as we move inward, we're gonna go Triassic, 
And then we're going to get all the way in the very middle. If we take a little side trip and look at one of the cliffs that we drive by, we'll be looking at the Pennsylvanian in the core. The Geodesy team reaches Capitol Reef National Park, part of the Grand Staircase Escalante. Following a short presentation, they travel the Burr Trail, heading to the Water Pocket Fold. The road is a series of extreme switchbacks. With a Water Pocket Fold as a backdrop, John Kennar, a veteran of Glendale's geology field trips, tells the story of how this formation was created. About 70 to 80 million years ago, uh, this part of the country, right here, not over there, was uplifted about 7,000 feet due to tectonic activity. The water pocket of Pulse was named because some places there are water pockets which are formed in the sandstone. Water collects and pretty soon you got a nice little water pocket. And that is my understanding of how this area got named. It was time to hit the road once again. Next stop, Kodachrome Basin State Park and Camp. Kodachrome Basin State Park was named after the popular color film following a National Geographic Society expedition in 1948. Tonight, for the adventurers, following a long day, it is home. A hearty meal rejuvenates the adventurous soul. The menu is simple. Try to find something that's easy. <laughs> easy, quick and you can make a bunch of it at once. While food prep is underway, each student has one word to describe how they feel so far about their geodesy. Sleepy. Petrol. Tiring. Erosion. Astonishing. Cool. Dusty. <laughs> Time. Beautiful. When geodesy returns, the adventurers get rugged and they get dusty. As their geodesy takes them to Bryce Canyon National Park, and Zion National Park. <laughs> it's dawn of day five of the 10-day geodesy the sleeping landscape is awakening. The Geodesy adventurers break camp and leave Kodachrome Basin State Park and head for Bull Valley Gorge and then on to Bryce Canyon and Zion National Parks. With an adventurous spirit, Geodesy takes roads less traveled. Geodesy crosses streams off the beaten path. Geodesy's purpose, to give students an opportunity to study geology in the wilds, to see the rocks and their formations up close. I feel uh, proud of the students and, and proud of our system that we offer this. I'm always telling my students here on campus in lab that you know we shouldn't be teaching this in the classroom. They visit Bull Valley Gorge along Willis Creek in the Grand Staircase Escalante. The gorge is a long slot canyon comprised mostly of Navajo sandstone. It is rugged and unique. That's the thing about the plateau. I mean, it's so colorful and diverse because of all the different weathering things that we see. Bryce Canyon National Park received its national park designation in 1928. Bryce is located in southwestern Utah, about 50 miles northeast of Zion National Park. Bryce Canyon's very distinctive features are its geologic structures called hoodoos. These red, orange, and white rock spires and narrow fins are a popular tourist attraction. With the hoodoos providing a colorful background, the geodesy team is told of Bryce's unique beginnings. Bryce started its formation about 65 million years ago when the oceanic plate pushed up the continental plate forming the Rockies. Geodesy is a journey of discovery. In the cliffs up here we've got the Navajo sandstone, which is uh, Jurassic aged, sort of middle dinosaur times. The history of the Colorado Plateau is revealed through its ancient seabeds magnificent mountain ranges, 
and colorful rock layers. Each one of those represents a, an environment in the past, and we wanted to really kind of weave that story, tell that story of what has gone on here in what's now Arizona and Utah. Zion National Park is perhaps the most unique environment in the entire Plateau region. It was established as a national park in 1919. Juan Toledo tells his fellow adventurers about some of Zion's unusual formations. It gets its name from, its, from the checkerboard pattern that it gets from the horizontal and vertical cracks on the mountain here. Two days encamped at Zion, the geodesy students get a day to themselves. One group decides to visit Angel's Landing. Another takes on the trail leading to Observation Point. It was a day of discovery and spectacular mountain views. Following a rewarding day on Zion's trails, the adventurers are told of the park's unique vegetation. The hanging gardens are hydrophytic, her herbaceous habitats that grow on the canyon walls. Instructors say that trips like geodesy go far beyond the pages of textbooks the students play an active role in the total experience. It's one thing to read about something, it's another to go and experience it, and then it's a third to actually have to explain it. As the adventurers leave Zion, they stop just outside the park to search through an ancient seabed that's teeming with fossils. Once again, student geologists showcase their knowledge and love for learning. I think what I found here at the time may have been the top of the sea floor at the time because right here you'll see we see all these brachiopods which are clam-like sort of things. But if you'll notice on the sides in the bottom you will not find anything. So I'm thinking this may be the top of the floor here. Some of the, the depth of their understanding is just spectacular. I just can't imagine when they go to their their 300 level class at that when they transfer to a four year university um, my guess is that they're probably coming in ahead of the game, and that, that's, that's really the best thing we can offer. Geodesy has taken the adventurers a long way. They've seen so much, and there's so much more yet to come. Like a stop at the Coral Pink Sand Dunes State Park in Utah. This windswept landscape offers thousands of acres of shifting red sandstone sand dunes. 50 feet high of sand creates a natural playground for any wayward traveler. When Geodesy returns, the adventurers visit the North Rim of the Grand Canyon, Marble Canyon, and Balancing Rock. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. With only two days left on their geodesy, the Glendale Community College students have traveled more than 2,000 miles. They've studied the Earth and have experienced her magnificence. Instructors say that these kinds of trips enhance learning that lasts a lifetime. Each day's experiences add to an overall appreciation. By the end, then, you have sort of a, a tapestry. It's almost like a, um, uh, a patchwork quilt, right? You get the big view as the quilt, and then each little patch has its own story to it. And then by the end, you've got this sort of nice thing to hang on your mental wall as an experience that makes you want to go, you know, go, go see the next quilt and the next trip. Day eight of Geodesy was busy. A quick trip to Glen Canyon National Recreation Area and the dam, and then back to northern Arizona and camp. The adventurers made camp along Rock House Road near the Vermilion Cliffs National Monument area. It's a dry camp and that means roughing it. No running water and no restroom facilities. When we're traveling in those groups in primitive areas, well, you gotta have somewhere to go, right? 
so we brought it with us. With only a short walk from camp, private accommodations are made available. A quick lesson on potty use is given. No, oh my God. God. <laughs> you gotta show everybody how to use it or you'll wind up with a very messy situation. <laughs> I'm totally digging the toilet. The geology team uses an ancient method that lets everyone know whether the wilderness latrine is either available or not available. The soft drink cup method is employed. When the cup's in place, the latrine is available. When the cup is gone, the latrine is occupied. Wayne Johnson is a veteran outdoorsman. He's up early and gets breakfast going. His love for geology and nature began early in life. I started doing these trips as a student back in the 70s. And it was the instructor, Bob Thompson, that was here that turned me on to all these different areas. And like I say, these are, they were the best experiences of my whole college life getting out there. And I really like taking new people to those same places. The new Geodesy Day starts off by satisfying a hearty appetite. No other place can you get such a great scenery. Okay, we got five With full bellies, it was time for Geodesy to push on. Breaking camp quickly, the adventurers were once again on the road. Geodesy visited the Grand Canyon once again, but this time the North Rim. While in northern Arizona, Geodesy made quick stops along the Colorado River, Marble Canyon, and balanced rocks at Lee's Ferry. And so Geodesy began to wind down as the caravan drew nearer to Phoenix and home. But there's always plenty of time to stop and look for more rocks. There we go. Nearly 2,000 years ago, Sunset Crater Volcano erupted. This fiery volcano ravaged the landscape and destroyed villages. Sunset Crater Volcano National Monument quietly rests outside of Flagstaff, Arizona. It is the youngest of the Colorado Plateau volcanoes. The lava flows and cinder rocks give any seasoned or aspiring geologist an opportunity to study a more recent natural event. For most people, the last day of any extended trip include time to reflect what their geodesy meant to them. I took a geology class just for fun. I really liked it, so I started taking more of them and started doing these field trips, and I, I really enjoyed it. Ever since I was little, I just kind of never grew out of rocks. I've never been really out of Arizona. I go to one spot in Nevada, and that's it, and I've seen stuff that I never really thought I'd see. Life-changing experiences and learning in the field. For geology instructors, the rewards are what the student adventurers leave the plateau with. It was just really heartening to see just the depth of understanding. I was kind of amazed. I'm like, wow, we really got them to understand it that well? I mean, that's our intent. Geodesy truly provided a vivid tapestry of how time and nature work in harmony. How nature has carefully stitched the story of this region, and seemingly, how it is a story that is unending. Jennifer Harmon closes her diary with this comment about geodesy. And so, as our 10th and final day together is rolling to an end, I realize how hugely monumental this whole trip was for me, for all of us. We're no longer clueless spectators, but we have now emerged into proud, knowledgeable people of this vast and beautiful landscape that we all call the Colorado Plateau. The adventurers leave the plateau with many memories. The effect of the plateau is indelible. They came, experienced, and learned. And yet, the magnitude and the majesty of this landscape holds so much more. Woo!